guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I finally got my hands on some Fenty products. I tried out all the base products that I received for you guys and I tell you my honest opinion. So if you guys want to see what I thought about Fenty Beauty, please keep watching. Okay guys, so I've got my eye makeup on already and I haven't got anything on my skin except for some moisturiser. Today's moisturiser that I used is from Sunday Riley. It's a brand new one that I just received so I just tried it out for the first time. It's called the CEO Protection and Repair Moisturiser. So this is meant to be really good for if you live in like a lot of pollution and damage from the sun and stuff like that. So it's got vitamin C in here. It's the first ever cream to ever be stabilised in a jar, which apparently is really, really hard to do. I need to put on a primer now I don't have the Fenty primer because it's all sold out I think so I'm gonna go for a normal primer a primer that I'll normally use on my skin so the primer that I'm really loving right now is from Hourglass and it's called the mineral veil primer it's oil free but it's really good for oily skin and it makes foundation really really long wearing it is quite like smooth and silicone so it might be good for dry skin as well so I just use a little bit, a little bit goes a long way with this primer. The only thing that is a bit annoying is that when you first put it on, it has like a white cast. I love the fact that it's oil free though, because I have some oily skin, I do not need extra oil, you know what I'm saying guys, you know what I'm saying? But I do have a lot of dry flaky skin here, which I can feel. So annoying bitch! So I have my bag of Fenty products here. Oh! So I have a lot of base products. I don't have anything for the eyes and things like that. So I thought today, maybe I could do a little updated foundation routine slash my first impressions because I haven't done foundation on YouTube for a long time. I do normally have a separate video on how I do my highlight and contour and things like that. But let's update that shit. <laughs> it was quite hard matching my foundation online because they had neutral, warm and cool undertones. But different brands class different things as like cool and warm. If you're like an NC at MAC, you're more yellow based but in other foundations C means pink I think and warm means yellow but at max the other way around so I think that's really annoying max out a different way around so I ended up trying 290 and 300 if you guys don't follow me on snapchat I did show a little bit on my hand and I did definitely notice that the foundation oxidizes and it oxidizes and changes undertone as well so that is a bit weird and annoying but i also have been looking online because obviously everyone and their mama has been posting videos about fenty beauty i found people that was like similar skin tone than me they use like darker foundations and i was like really but then it looked all right on them but then when i swatched these like 300 turns out to be really dark and then 290 it starts off like a bit gray and then it turns olivey green so i'm like what the hell it's a bit hard to pick your skin tone guys i'm not gonna lie so first impressions of the packaging is quite nice because it's nice and tall and slim you get 30 two mils in here which normally you only get 30 mils in a foundation bottle so that's an extra two mil and it's called the pro filter soft matte long wear foundation me i'm all about the matte i'm all about the long wear but i hate it when i get foundations that's too long wearing like estate all the double wear where it literally like dries your skin and settles in and then it makes your skin look so freaking flaky and cakey af so hopefully this will not do that i'll try some swatches on my skin of both and i've also got the foundation brush the full body foundation brush and I've also got the sponge. So we can try both today, okay? 290 is meant to be a bit more a yellow undertone and then 300 is a bit more of a neutral undertone. So I definitely did not think this was neutral. I definitely think this was warm though. So I think the description is a bit wrong. Or maybe I'm saying it wrong because I can't fucking remember. I like the fact it doesn't look too chunky, not too much packaging, nice and sleek. Has a pump in it, which is always a winner winner chicken dinner. Okay, so 290. So this is very similar to like something that I would go for, especially like in the winter time, I'm a bit more paler. And then I'll show you 300. So this one's a bit more like orangey, yellow undertone. And then this one, when you look at it, it's a bit more like olivey. A lot of coverage, a lot, a lot of coverage. Okay, let me do some swatches. This is 290 and 300. I think I'm definitely a 290. 300 is very orangey and it's even oxidising on my skin as well. It's going darker and darker as we speak. So 290 looks a bit better. And I blend it in. It's very olivey though, which is kind of a good thing. I don't really have a foundation shade that's similar like this. So I think we're going to go for 290 today. But on my skin, guys, it's so dark. It's changed colours completely. It's so crazy. Foundation, when it oxidises, basically means that when you first pump it onto the skin, it looks like a 
like a, a different colour and then when you wait like a couple of minutes when the air reacts to it, it changes colour. So that's something that happens with a lot of matte foundations in particular. So we're going to try to use a foundation brush. I never ever use brushes for foundation. That's just like old school. So I much prefer sponges and stuff. But maybe we'll do one side with a brush and one side with a sponge and we'll see if the foundation can shear down and be flexible and stuff like that. So very nice and simple classic, the 110 full body foundation brush. Oh, I like the design. I like the pink. I'm so over having just black brushes. I love it when brush handles are a bit different so I can actually see them in my freaking pot of brushes. Like, this is just one out of three pots of brushes. So this is the brush for foundation. It's a bit more of a domed brush. It's not the typical flat foundation brush, which is nice as well. Bristles, I like the fact that these are synthetic, but it's shaped really nicely. Sometimes when you find synthetic brushes, it's just literally like quite blunt, and then you end up getting edges in your foundation. Foundation brushes tend to give you a bit more coverage rather than a sponge. So can you see when I went into the foundation, it's lighter, and then when I reacted to the air, it's darker. It's got like a line. Oh my God, that is so orange now. Look at that on my skin. Seriously, it did not look like that when I first applied it. I actually really thought that 290 would be too light for me, but I'm glad I went for it in the end. I do find it's really annoying the fact that there's so many foundation shades, but when you pop out the foundation and then you leave it for a while it's a completely different shade so i feel like they're missing out quite a big jump because from this shade i feel like the next shade darker is meant to be 300 but that's quite a lot darker it goes really orangey okay so i've done one pump and it covered half a cheek i feel like it's definitely a medium coverage foundation it's not covering up all my like garring here i might try a bit of 300 on my forehead i'm not gonna waste this do you know what i'm saying I like my forehead to be a bit darker anyway because I got a big ass forehead. I think 300 would be good for when I have a bit more of a tan. Sometimes when I get really dark, I know this kind of won't be dark enough, so it's a bit, a bit annoying, really. The brush seems to be blending it out really well. It's not leaving like harsh lines, which I find a lot of brushes do normally. So the foundation is nice. I do feel like because I have a little bit of texture on my skin, it's kind of picking it up a little bit. All here, you still see my acne scarring, so I'm definitely going to need to go in with another round. When I first put it on, it's so light. I don't think she has a concealer in her range, but I do have some of the match sticks. I'll try those as concealer. I think they're like multi-purpose sticks. Okay, so I normally get a lot of caking around my nostrils in particular if I do find caking with foundations. And I haven't got too much caking from this so far. Oh, that's quite nice. It matches my neck. Probably the best uh, of foundations ever matched for me before. With my undertone, I don't know why, but I have a little bit of a green undertone. So I'm about like an NC30. Well, I try to say I'm like a 35, but really when I go out in the sunlight, it's a bit dark. So I'm probably like NC30 to NC35, but definitely a yellow undertone. So I feel like even with this foundation, I don't need powder to go on top because it's really matte. But I do have a powder from the Fenty collection as well. So the brush I'm liking, actually, I think I would actually use a brush and the foundation i actually like you see it's covered up all my redness i have a lot of redness around my nose and this side as well i have the most texture at the moment can you guys see all these little like patches so annoying it was on this cheek the other day and then now it's like gone over to this cheek so we are going to try the little sponge on the other side so this is the precision makeup sponge i'm always very dubious of sponges because a lot of them are like rock hard oh this is quite soft though it has like three different edges so it's round here like a beauty blender and then it goes flat and then it has a little edge here to go right underneath your eyes so as always i'm going to wet my sponge you never want to use a sponge dry the only time i would ever use a sponge dry is to put like a heavy layer of powder on but i also do that with that one as well so i need to tell you guys the right way to wet your beauty blender because a lot of people don't know how to use a beauty blender like a lot of people just literally like miss it like this and then after they just use it and think it's damp but no that's not the right way to use it girl you're using it wrong if you actually have a tap close to you you want to go in and actually run this whole thing inside of the tap run it straight under and then you pump it while the water is running on it and then basically what that does is that infuses the sponge with a lot of water because you don't want your foundation dry because it absorb a lot of your foundation you end up wasting your foundation and you end up wasting money girl so what you need to do is you need to make sure that you wet the inside of the sponge like right in the depth in the middle of the sponge not just wet on the outside and that's it because it's happened to me before when i went on a makeup job and i gave the girl a sponge to her, ask her to wet it for me she was just put it under the tap quickly and then just like squeeze it and she gave me it so half the sponge was like puffy half the sponge was like so dry and it was all like misshaped whereas you want the whole sponge to be like all puffy so that's how you know you have a good sponge when the sponge is really soft 
before you even put water in it because I have other sponges that are like fake. This is like a bleach London one. I used it yesterday but it's really hard. Like this one is super super hard, it's not squishy. And then I put water in it and it just expanded but it was like a, a hard rock. Did you hear that? Whereas this one, does that sound the same? <laughs> I'm gonna show you my ghetto ass way of Fucking making your sponge expand but not go to the tap. Because my tap's all downstairs, bitch. I ain't about to go downstairs. So what I do is I keep a water bottle. You guys probably all see this crusty ass water bottle in my Instagram video. Rather than spraying it on the outside like this because then you only wet the outside. What you want to do is push this right next to the nozzle and then just pump inside of the sponge. And then I do it from all different angles, so on top, and can you see, like, it's starting to get like, bubbles because inside of the sponge is, like, puffy with water. So you want to get that puff all the way around. And then what I do, you want to use a tissue, and then now you squeeze out as much of the moisture as you can because you don't want the sponge to be soaking wet. You want to get out as much water as you can. And normally when you do this, the sponge will be even more soft and squidgy. And you don't want to see, like, where little bumps of the water is you want it to be all the way puffy around okay so this is the sponge it's gone a bit bigger it's really really soft now i'm actually really impressed with it this might be my new favorite sponge the only thing is because it's new it's gonna get dirty really quickly <laughs> okay so back in with a 290 that's on one pump i'm gonna use a flat edge of the sponge oh, i love a sponge I don't know how people can still use foundation brushes, honestly. I use a sponge, like, look how quick it's got, like, half the fucking face already. I do find, though, you do end up using more foundation because the sponge naturally absorbs some of it, but then in the same time, you don't get a cakey finish, but sometimes your brush can give quite a cakey finish. If you don't want to go direct into the foundation, you can dot it onto your skin first and then blend it so you're not wasting any product that go directly on the sponge. I just find with the sponge, it's so much easier to layer. This has a really nice edge on here because it's not too pointy where it goes into my eye it's got that kind of like cut off bit there so it goes right underneath my eye really really nicely i always think the foundation finish with a sponge is so much nicer it's so much more airbrushed soft and smooth it's like impossible to get harsh lines with this well i find with brushes sometimes you have to be careful if there's any streaks on the foundation brush from the bristles it's foundation i don't even have to blend it down to my neck it blends seamlessly love it love it when you find a good shade i feel like the sponge still has a little bit of excess on there the more i pounce the more coverage it gives me this is why i hate doing my eyeshadow first guys because you can't get in all the nooks and crannies i don't know how people do it i used to do my eyeshadow first before my foundation and now i completely forgot how i used to do it i'm gonna do one more layer oh when i feel it now it's literally like matte not tacky whatsoever i think this foundation to be honest would be better for oily skin i don't think you'll like this if you have really dry skin if you've got dry skin it might be like too much for you it might be like too matte you know i'm gonna build a layer on the other side as well it's building up really nicely it's not caking up when i add more layers which is good because a lot of foundations when they dry matte when you put another layer it starts to like separate and go horrible on the nose and stuff a lot of scar on my fucking forehead recently <gasps> This is the problem with me, I just pick, pick, pick at my skin and then it's like scar, scar, silly. Freddy Krueger up in here. This is so matte, I haven't used a matte foundation like this. Okay, the foundation is on and I am loving it, I like it. The only thing is here, I don't know if you guys can still see, but I've still got a few blemishes coming through and I can't seem to get my sponge in there to lay up directly on there. So let's just leave it, it doesn't bother me too much. Okay, so we're going to go in with some matte sticks. I've got three matte sticks to show you guys. I've got Mocha, Maybe maple and bamboo so these are just the ones i picked out online it was so hard to like tell what one is which it says it's a matte skin stick they also have metallic ones but all the metallic ones were not up my street the colors that like, it would be better for like deeper skin tones and one was like so yellow literally like gold on the skin i know so many people say that they love trophy wife and stuff but honestly that color is like something i would just never wear i would never ever wear that as a highlighter and i feel like if another brand bought that out as a highlighter a lot of people would be like what the fuck is this but i think like because rihanna bought it out i don't know it seems like a big deal but unless you're really like a deep undertone maybe you would get away with that but honestly it's so yellow it's got a bit of a green tint to it as well so i don't know how i feel about that i don't think anyone would actually ever wear that out but i did get another highlighter which i'll show you in a bit Okay, so let's try mocha. Mocha is a contour colour and then maple and bamboo. Oh my god, they're like magnetic. Okay, so let's try bamboo. This is really cute. I like the fact it's like octagon. I don't have anything like this. It's very clever packaging. Okay, so I'll try it up here. So this is bamboo here. It's a bit pinky. It's a bit yellow on camera, but when I look at it here, it looks quite like pinky neutral. So that might be good underneath the eyes. Okay, so I also got maple. This is like my skin colour. It's like a concealer type situation. And then 
got a mocha. It's like a cond rouge type shade. It's quite orangey. They're all magnetic, so they're literally like joined forces. Look, it's like so fun. I love playing with stuff like this. I'm such a fiddly fidgeter. Okay, so these are the three shades that I have. This one, not as light as I would like for highlighting, but let's try it. Bamboo. Got right underneath the eye. Definitely very matte. It's a bit dry, the formula. Let's try this maple on my forehead because I need a bit more coverage here. So this is definitely not my skin colour. It's a bit lighter than my skin colour, but not as light as this colour. Okay, and then let's go mocha. This colour's quite nice, actually. Let me speak after I've blended it before I talk too soon. Forehead, and then I'm going to do my nose. I'm going to blend it out using a Morphe G40 brush. Oh, it actually blends up really nicely. I thought it would like dry and then take off the foundation. Sometimes I find it will stick and stick. So when you blend them out, it takes off all the coverage of the foundation. But this actually blends up really, really easily. It doesn't tug at the skin when it's blending out. Honestly, guys, when I first heard of this range, everyone was going crazy for it. And people are still queuing outside like weeks later after launch. I was just like, really? The finish of it is actually really nice. I'm actually impressed so far. I thought it was very, very overhyped. But I feel like I've got like a good base of products i didn't pick out a lot of the other products there's some products from the range i was like really would anyone actually even use that then i'm just going to use a smaller dose of color shading brush and just on my nose the shade's actually really nice it's like warm but not too warm when it's orangey i don't think it has a little bit of like a cool tint to it at the same time i'm just blending it up onto my eyebrow to make it a bit more natural but i always do the contour blending first now i used to do the highlight blending first but i find the highlight you need to keep it there just to like clean up the contour a bit after okay i'm gonna go in with my sponge and we'll flip it around the other way use the ass of the freaking sponge ass 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 mm, 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 mm. I'm just blending it into the contour so the contour is not too wide. I feel like a lot of time when people contour their nose, they put like this fat line and the freaking contour doesn't end all here. You only want like a thin line of contour. If it's too thick, then it'll make your freaking nose look humongous. So the matchsticks are meant to be like multi purpose. I always want like a longer chin. I've had so much filling on my chin, but I still feel like it's not long enough. I feel like it's really like bright up under my eyes. I feel like the formulas have definitely been designed to go on top of each other because I find when I do this step, because I use it from different brands maybe, I find it, sometimes it takes away the foundation, sometimes it doesn't go on top of the foundation nicely, but I feel like it's blended really smoothly, especially because right now my skin's not the best. Okay, so now that I've got all my highlight and contouring on, I'm going to go in with the Invisimat Blotting Powder. Oh, I love a good powder, guys. Especially like a good translucent one. They're really hard to find like a good one. That's like, gives you enough matteness, but not making it look cakey. Oh, there comes a little sponge thing. Okay, I'll use that. <laughs> I feel like the packaging is a bit chunky, though. Like, this is annoying to carry around in a purse, especially when you need to, like, block. Because it goes, like, thin, and it goes, like, so freaking chunky here for, like, no reason. Okay, so the brush I'm going to use... I need to fucking wash it. Mm -hmm. This is the Morphe 581 brush. This powder better not ruin it, because I'm liking everything that's happening so far. Apparently, you don't even have to set this. So I think if you've got dry skin, maybe skip the powder. But, you know, your girl's oily. I like to see powders, because sometimes they, like, smooth out the skin as well. Some powders make your skin look fucking dry AF. The powder's okay. It's not the best powder I've tried. My favourite powder is my Too Faced Primed and Poreless. This is my favourite. It's my second one that I've used all up. Because I like that powder because it makes your skin look so smooth. Whereas this one, I feel like when I'm picking it up, not a lot goes on my brush. Which could be a good thing, but I have to keep going back in to dip all the time. It's so annoying. And it doesn't make my skin look really soft compared to the Too Faced one. The Too Faced one is so good for pores. I feel like now that I powdered it, all the texture on my skin is showing from my little rash. But before I powdered it, it was fine. Ah, that's annoying. Okay, so now I am going in with the highlighter. It's the last product that I have. And it is the Killer Watch Freestyle Highlighter Duo in Mean Money and Hustler, baby. Come give it to me. I don't know if that's a song. Is that a song? I don't know. Okay, so in this highlighting duo, it has two shades. One is Mean Money. This is this one. I don't know who the hell would ever want to wear this. It's like nothing. It doesn't even show it on your hand. And then you've got a total opposite, which is Hustler Baby. And the other side, which is gorgeous. 
That's like a nice human. The one next to it, I'm like, girl. Yeah. This is what I find so annoying about duos, about some eyeshadow palettes or like palettes in general. You'll always have one that you love and then one is like you'll never ever touch it. I would have preferred this colour to be all the way around like Trophy Wife. But this one has a good duo but it's so annoying. I'll never be touching this one but I like this one. So, and then I'm going to use my favourite highlighting brush. This is from Eco Tools. It's like a fan brush. I don't know if this will do it but any fan brush will do. Mmm. Very gold. Do I like it? It is nice, it's very gold though. It's got quite like a little bit of like a lime green to it, or is it just me imagining things? I don't know how I feel about it yet. I just doused myself in it and let me see. I don't know if it's a highlighter that I could use on its own. I feel like I would need another highlighter on top to pop it out a bit more. Let me try using a smaller brush. I'm going to go in with the Sigma Highlighting Cheekbone Brush, the F03 brush. Nose highlighting, if I don't do it, it like makes my face look so flat. This is what gives my face dimension. The more I layer on, the lighter it's getting. And with a smaller brush, I can definitely be a bit more targeted and build it up. But on first reaction, when I first put it on, I definitely have to layer it up to make it get to something that I like. I think it's nice, but it's not the best highlighter I've ever tried. Like, I think my Rodeo Drive from Ofra is nicer than this one. It is very gold, and I like the fact that there's no undertone to it. So there's not like a dark powder and then like a light colour going through it. Because that's what happens with a lot of highlighters. It has such a pigment underneath. It almost needs to be translucent and then like a sheen on top. So what I find with the new Nikki X Ofra Glow Gold, I love the colour but when I turn to the side it has like a pink undertone to it so it looks like I've got a blush up really high which I don't like the look of. Okay what do you guys think? Do you like it? Do you not like it? Should I add some blusher? Okay guys so this is it for all of the Fenty Beauty. I'm just going to finish off my makeup to add a little bit of blusher and my eyes and lips and I'll be back. Okay guys so I just finished this look off with a dark lip. Let me me know what you guys think of Fenty Beauty. My honest opinion is I actually really like the foundation. I thought I wouldn't, especially from my first impressions trying it on in my hand on Snapchat. I was like, what the hell are these colours? But I honestly thought that I would have been a 300, but I'm actually a 290. So I went up a little bit lighter. Please, 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 if you are going through a Sephora or Harvey Nichols, try a little pump on your hand, walk around for a bit before you purchase the foundation shade. Or maybe try a shade a little bit lighter and see how you get along with that because for me honestly it does change like one or two shades a bit darker so try it out before you buy it guys as for a sample i'm pretty sure they should be good on giving samples but the foundation is only 26 pounds which is actually really affordable compared to other foundations which are normally like 28 or 30 with other high-end brands so it's quite a good price point i also really like the matchsticks i thought i wouldn't like these as much as i did but they actually blend out really really nicely and they're really matte and so they give like a really good coverage at the same time and blends out really well i would actually really recommend recommend the foundation sponge because it's actually really really spongy it's actually very similar to a beauty blend it's the closest one i've tried the foundation brush was okay i'd rather spend that money on another makeup product rather than a brush and then the powder i wouldn't recommend it that much because it was a bit dry so let me know if there's any other fenty products i need to try let me know if you're going to be purchasing anything after watching this video let me know as well as down below if you enjoyed seeing reviews like this if you want to see more reviews on just one brand of tutorials if there's anything else you want to see please let me know down below also make sure you follow me on all my other social media platforms it's just x Tweety or snapchat twitter instagram and facebook and make sure you subscribe before you leave and i'll see you guys in my next video oh bitch oh bitch enjoy the bloopers <laughs> by the way guys if you hear grand snoring he's literally back here sleeping away Gwang, you're snoring I'm well shut your mouth you shut your mouth i thought you were filming uh, ig videos mate i did i filmed one already so why are you filming that one I'm filming foundation now you're quiet fenty someone's approaching me my phone's not silent Rushes. oh my god this fun. So as always, I'm always gonna wet my bra. Oh, brush. <laughs> it's a fucking sponge, bitch. You have a gangbang on the fucking sponge. You know what I'm saying, guys? A berserk on the sponge. <laughs> Is it berserk? Why is it when they come all over the face? Oh my god! Okay, don't add that in, girl. I gotta fucking get flagged. Oh, shit, too heavy. Thumbnail time. <laughs>